We're here to talk about the kitchen of the future. Basically, the Food Service Technology Center, this place where I work, we invented the study of energy in commercial food service. The most important thing is that we're an unbiased energy efficiency research project. You guys are huge energy companies, okay? You are buying energy and you are converting that to hot or cold food and selling it to a customer. Energy and water are commodities. You need to know how much you're spending on that and cut those costs down. But that first step is not that hard. The first step really is just to go with best in class that is available today, okay? So Energy Star appliances, the appliances that have our California rebate. Our future sits right here and it's, some of this stuff has been available for a while. It's been available for years. The first one I want to point out is the VTEC broiler. Cost of purchase is a fraction of cost of ownership for a piece of equipment. So the beauty about this broiler is they've taken that sort of primitive, just open burners and grate and actually put some radiance inside of it. So now we can get the same kind of performance out of this broiler at 72,000 BTU per hour that you'd normally need 100, 110, 120,000 BTU per hour to get, right? So we've just dialed back the energy that you're using to produce your food by 25, 30%. That's money directly in your pocket. So the second thing is the griddle. The griddle has two things. So there's energy savings, but also uniformity. So instead of having three big rude burners in there and real hot spots, now we're talking about infrared burners and we're spreading that out. So this is a big deal. And then the third thing is this fryer. This is a piece of equipment that is the most sold piece of equipment out there and, and probably the, the place where we're the most behind in energy efficiency. The thing that makes this fryer so awesome is that heat exchanger. So a fryer like this and you see the heat exchanger is complicated and then if you look down inside you see the, the guts of this thing. Now we, we don't just have these World War II shot burners in there. Now we're talking about some power burners and some technology. All the Energy Star stuff came through our lab. Um, and Energy Star is our way of getting you engineering information in one really palatable little bite. Basically when we're cooking a fry what we're doing is we're bringing all this stuff up to 212 degrees and then blowing out a lot of water. You're really steaming the product and then sort of caramelizing the outside. And you only make money on the energy that makes it into the food that you sell. Energy efficiency numbers, which look really nerdy, boil down to simple economics. It's the energy you sold divided by the energy that you bought. Okay, that's it. It's pretty straightforward. So if you go to the Energy Star site or you go to our fishnook.com, you get information on performance. And we have calculators. The fryer that most people buy just out of the box, well that's the 30% efficient fryer. And the low efficiency is 800 bucks a year and the high efficiency fryer is $1,400 a year. But you're not keeping it for one year. You guys are going to keep these fryers for more than one year. And in fact, we're talking entry level fryers, let's say five years. So now let's look at the cost analysis. Here's where we started. That was that first decision we had to make. Bingo, now we add in the energy. And at the end of five years, we're walking away with 20, almost $2,400, uh, and we have a high-performance fryer, right? So that's, that's awesome. I'm gonna talk about that Vulcan right in the back there. So this is really simple. I just go here, I click on my gas fryers, and it brings up a very simple calculator. The high-efficiency fryer is a high-performance piece of equipment. It recuperates very quickly. It is back of snuff. The fryer back there, you can barrel it. As soon as the fries are done, you can put another load in. Here's what it looks like comparatively, right? So now we're talking performance, we're talking food quality because we're cooking the fries in a hurry and we can barrel the high efficiency fryer and we're talking production. Uh, we're getting more production out of the high performance fryer. You can look and see there's a, there's a good minute between the cook times and there's a couple of minutes if you're, if you're making the low efficiency uh, fryer recover. So that's, now we got food quality and production time, right? So good stuff. Now sustainability, all you guys are gonna have to deal with sustainability. You need almost three acres of forest to handle the CO2 that's given off by one inefficient fryer in one location for one year. And then what I just want you thinking about is, you know, as you're signing new contracts, as things are breaking down, that's your opportunity to pull in this more efficient equipment, okay? Some of the things that we're working on in our lab right, right now, some great technologies, so demand ventilation, it just makes total sense, you'll, you'll see that. Um, energy management system, wireless communications, um, cheap electronics, the ability to put brains in appliances, it's all gonna come together and we're gonna get some energy management systems and food service. Daylighting and lighting controls, high efficiency water heating and delivery, you spend a lot of money on water heating and just throw it away. You make a lot of hot water that never gets used. Heat recovery, solar thermal heating. So really the sustainable kitchen will guide us to the kitchen of the future. What you consider best practice today must become standard practice. And there was a time when I was a kid and seatbelts were considered 
a uh, best practice, and now about 92% of Americans use seatbelts. It's standard practice. That's where we're trying to get this industry. That's really the kitchen of the future.